Coming up next on Good Taste, the big time fisherman turned star chef who lured in his future bride with oysters. She was willing to eat her first oyster, which I think is a sign of true love. Then, meet the guys who risked it all on these noble sensations. I have a dream and I have a vision and you know, I think we can make this work. Then, talk about vision. A dream that transformed this car wash and laundromat into one of the best organic eateries in San Antonio. Good Taste starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I hope you're hungry. Let's head to the Bayou City first. People from around the world travel to Houston to get great seafood. And day after day, it's served up at Reef, fresh from the Gulf and crafted and created by the one and only Chef Brian Caswell. Being in the spotlight is nothing new for Chef Brian Caswell. This Houston star chef made a splash on shows like the Food Network's Next Iron Chef, Top Chef, and others in between. Uh, he always does something very unique with the menu, and uh, it's all about the food, which is what I like. Caswell's very popular seafood restaurant, Reef, is often in the spotlight, too, winning rave reviews for its fresh seafood from around the globe. Despite the fame, Caswell still knows his way around a redfish. Or just about any other type of fish, for that matter. I was a fish butcher long before I was a cook. This chef also knows how to reel in a crowd with his fresh take on that fresh seafood. The uh, locally sourced and the freshness of the food, to me, you can't beat it. Reef is a bright and airy space in shades that remind you of the sea a spot that serves more than 60 different species of seafood. All infused with a sophisticated tour of flavors from across the globe. A whole roasted gulf red snapper topped with shallots, candy ginger, and cherry tomatoes, garnished with fresh cilantro and mint, and a lemongrass broth. Or this colorful crudo, made with ocean fresh cobia and Asian pear, glistening in a glaze of spicy chili oil and pecan pesto. Still hungry? How about this eye-popping double-cut pork chop, marinated overnight in a mojo-style brine, then slow-smoked and grilled to perfection. Just a small sample of the incredible cuisine that keeps earning wreath accolades and helped put Houston's culinary scene on the map. What did being named best seafood restaurant in the country by Bon Appetit do for you guys? And that was the first time that I stood up and I was like, well, maybe this is bigger than what I, what I, what I thought. I was just trying to serve guests and have them come back because they had a good time. What keeps them coming back is incredibly well-prepared seafood, no doubt influenced by Caswell's deep connection to the sea. Before I started cooking, I was a fisherman. I've been, you know, I fished from Apalachicola to Brownsville and everywhere in between when I was growing up. I wanted to be a, a a marine biologist when I was a kid. This was, was my first love. He grew up in Houston, fishing with his dad and cooking what he caught, eventually leading him to a culinary career and exotic ports of call. I worked for nine years outside of Houston in Hong Kong, Bangkok, New York, uh, the Bahamas, and then Barcelona, and every place I was was by the sea. Those international flavors are now infused in the cuisine by the chef who's also made bycatch a buzzword. So if somebody's not going to eat snapper, then they'll eat triple tail, they'll eat cobia, they'll eat almaco jack, they'll eat, you know, the, all these different porgies that we have or, or, or drum or whatever. So that's, that's a bite of fish that's not one of these fish that need a break. You can feel his passion for protecting the gulf. If I had to choose between being able to serve something in a restaurant and for my child and myself or my grandchild being able to catch that thing and eat it, I would choose the latter because that's what brought me here. I, without that, this doesn't exist. Yeah, you have a very strong emotional connection no doubt. deep down, don't you? I mean, I love it. I mean, it's, you know, my wife and I, it's our entire life is, is connected to, to the Gulf and, and everything in between here and there and all up and down. The reef is pretty special to us. We actually got engaged here. Wow. <laughs> it's also a special place for Caswell's wife, Jennifer, who found love and her first oysters on the half shell here at Reef. The second date was here at the restaurant where I served her oysters, and I just found out two weeks ago that that was the first time she ever ate oysters. We had a tray full of oysters. I was like, I'm not eating those. That day I didn't want to look like a weenie, so I, I went ahead and I 
wipe the one down. She choked them down and acted like she loved them. I, I hope she did. She what said, we do for love. They still make date night a priority. Jennifer, a photographer and blogger, now manages marketing and social media for the restaurant. She also champions a crusade of her so, own. Um, we are currently raising money for Gulf Coast Charities so that we can help preserve the coast for our children and our children's children and everybody else. A resource well worth protecting, especially when you see that remarkable redfish on the menu. It's a skill he learned on those fishing trips way back when. This fish is oiled and seasoned with a special house blend of spices before going on a super hot grill. We're gonna add a little bit, a couple of slices of lemon like that. He covers it to create convection and seal in moisture. So we're gonna add some of this butter as we go it's going to smoke, so it's kind of a grill, smoke, bake kind of scenario. So it's based with butter and topped with fresh thyme, then plated with a decadent side of fried mac and cheese. It was just fabulous. It's it's really a nice place. It's phenomenal. Yeah, we love it. What's not to love with beautiful food like this? <laughs> Reef is definitely a spot to put on your to-do list. Coming up next, a healthy spot for the whole family. Organic food made with love in a cozy cove. But next, sandwich making buddies that put it all on the line for pulled pork and provolone. Good taste, we'll be right back. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back. Who doesn't love a good sandwich? I mean, a really good sandwich. We met up with a couple of guys from Corpus Christi who are lighting things up in Austin with their noble creations. Slide over subs, beat it, boring burgers. Lunchtime has never looked better at Noble Sandwich Company in Austin, where they rock a Reuben with mountains of tangy sauerkraut and melted provolone. And a knuckle sandwich is something you crave. Oh, that's a sweet sandwich right there, brother. There's some serious sandwich making going on here. Some even say life changing. Ever since I quit being a vegan, I've been doing swine burgers and it changed my religion. It's good. It's really good. With meaty, cheesy mouthfuls like this, you can't help but indulge. Scrum de Mm hmm. <laughs> All this goodness from a pair of college buddies who make pigging out a priority. With house-cured pork, hand-smoked duck pastrami, and homemade pimento cheese. Everything is scratch-made on this PBLT piled high with pork belly on house-baked bread. Spread with garlic mayo and layered with romaine roasted tomatoes and a sunny side-up egg. I had a swine burger with a fried egg on it. And it was really nice, it was really good. And you'll want to pull up a chair for this swine burger, an all pork patty dripping with provolone, brimming with crispy bacon, lettuce, tomato, and red onion, all on a whole grain bun. Paired here with fresh cut fries, smothered in melted cheese, also topped with a little bacon and green onions. Want to go vegetarian? There's a version for you with pimento cheese slathered heavy on hearty bread, garnished with green onions, romaine, and house-made olive oil pickles. Yeah, boy. That's what's up. So yeah. you guys sought each other out to do business together, right? We, we both started off in culinary school back in Del Mar, in Corpus Christi, uh, Del Mar Vikings. We, um, we kind of went off and did our own things for a few years. Went to San Francisco. Johnny went to Portland. Um, and we kind of met back up here in Austin. And, Johnny had this great idea for this wonderful sandwich shop. And what a great idea it was to combine the fine dining techniques they learned working at high-end restaurants with extreme sandwich making, all at an affordable price. You smoke your meats, yeah. you we bake your bread. Meats. We bake our breads, um, we make all of our pickles from scratch, we do all of our condiment making. And these little, little suckers are j just about done. Of course, there are boatloads of bacon. And there, there you go. Attention to detail was part of the plan. Also part of that master plan, a huge leap of faith and tons of elbow grease. 
I put my car up for sale. Um, you know, there were mortgage payments that were skipped. Uh, yeah. You know, we were funneling every extra dollar we had from our paychecks into the restaurant. We had to build tabletops. We had to build our own uh, yeah. bench seating, we put cabinetry. In the flooring, I mean, we put painted, in the flooring. And, you know, uh, electrical. I mean, anything that we could do ourselves to save a dollar, we absolutely did. And and that's pretty much why you probably won't see a 90 degree angle on any of these tables. <laughs> now, six years later, everything's just ducky especially in the kitchen. Yeah, so we're, this is how we do our duck pastrami. So basically we start off with the whole duck. Every great sandwich starts with quality ingredients. And at Noble Pig, deboning a duck is all in a day's work. You make it look really easy. I have done a few of these uh, in my day here. The duck is then doused with pastrami cure seasonings, allspice, peppercorn, garlic, and salt. It's all wrapped up and smoked overnight. Oh, look at that. That is, and you see the juices coming out there. Boy, that's, Whoa. that's the goods. No, cheers. That duck pastrami is grilled and smothered with Swiss cheese, then piled high with crunchy homemade sauerkraut and Russian dressing. A Reuben like no other. Hey, hey cheers, cheers. cheers uh. It's not no. nice to do this on no. camera. <laughs> A sensational slice of sandwich heaven. It's different, it's unique, it's delicious. All made better when you know friendship is the first ingredient. At the end of the day, even though there might be times where you butt heads because you have different visions, you know that each other's got each other's back. Now, that's something you can really sink your teeth into. Okay, that duck pastrami was amazing, and really, it's not that hard to do. So I went to my go-to chef at HEB. Good morning. Adrian at Cooking Connection. He's going to show us a fun way to do this, and it really can make great sandwiches, and with the holidays Absolutely. and people around. Yeah, for sure, and I love the flavor of duck, but I think turkey breast is a little more crowd-friendly. Right. So we're gonna do a simple brine today. We've got our fresh turkey breast from our meat market, great for the holidays, and I love the size of this. If you're not a big family, you can cook this for Thanksgiving as well. Yeah, that's so, the turkey. Yeah, it's a turkey breast, fresh. So to do the brine, we're gonna boil about three cups of water. We've got our black peppercorns, our real company dark brown sugar and pink Himalayan sea salt, a touch of red pepper flake, and the must-haves are the cloves and the juniper berries. Okay. We'll cook that down just till the sugar and salt's dissolved. We'll let it cool, and then we'll bag our turkey breast and let it sit in the brine for at least 48 hours. 48 hours. 48 Minimum. hours. Minimum. Okay. So once your turkey sit for a couple of days, we're going to pat it dry, and we're going to grind a mix of red pepper flakes, black pepper, juniper berries, and the sea salt. And we'll make a nice heavy rub for the outside. Your oven is at 250, and we're going to cook this turkey breast for about an hour, breast side down, and then we'll crank it up to 350, just so it's about, about 160 in the middle. So slice it thin, and we're going to deck it out on a nice piece of grilled rye bread straight from our bakery, scratch made and fresh, love that. And of course, it's all about the condiments, so we're using our 4J scallion mustard, that good whole grain hearty flavor, and to sweeten it up, we've got our buyer's best bread and butter pickles. Okay. These products may be one of my new finds. These, These guys, are amazing. they know how to do it right. The jar is beautiful. The product is even better on yeah. the inside, so they know what to do. It's good stuff. Okay, who wouldn't love this? The sandwich has everything you need, guys. The salty, the sweet, the spicy, the savory, and the crunch from those H-E-B kettle chips on the side. You can't go wrong with it. You can make your own pastrami. I've got all of the steps, all of the fun products we used right on GoodTaste.tv. My wine finds are coming up, but first, a mother on a mission to serve farm fresh food at a family friendly spot. You're gonna love this little cove. Good Taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. Some of San Antonio's healthiest, most carefully sourced food comes from well, a laundromat, where you can suds your duds or soak your car. A place where there's live music. A ton of local beers. So 52 beers on the back patio bar, which is an awesome bar, all from Texas. Yes, all for Texas, a lot of them from San Antonio. And famous fish tacos. That is really, really good. That is a serious taco. All at The Cove in San Antonio. The Cove is a fun, family-friendly spot where you can also feel good about what you're eating. 
There's a big bison burger with blue cheese served on a whole wheat bun with chipotle mayo and applewood smoked bacon piled on top of Thunderheart bison raised just up the road. How about this hearty sweet potato hash with bacon, roasted corn, a jalapeno romalade, and fresh cilantro crowned with a sunny side up egg? Or this power packed kale, avocado, and spinach salad with organic greens, a house made celery dressing, and pepitas. All from a mother of three who started out selling ice cream and toasted sandwiches in, of all places, a laundromat. I uh, began to study Ayurvedic medicine. It's a holistic medicine out, uh, from India. Right. I happened to find some books on it, was studying it, came across this one line that said, you know, food is either medicine or poison. And I remember thinking around that time, like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm killing people. <laughs> I know that <laughs> sounds <traditional>. dramatic. <laughs> sounds dramatic, but you know, food really is that powerful. And I realized that there was a, a contradiction um, about what I wanted to eat and put in my body and what I was serving to my customers. So Lisa Asbestos made the shift to all organic, locally sourced, sustainable, and farm to table fresh foods. You feel good and taste good? Her vision caught on and the cove expanded to include this beautiful spacious patio. There's room for everyone. I love that we have the big patio. I love that big families come out and eat and the kids play and, um, and, and they have a place where they can come and enjoy healthy food and, and, a, and a great environment. Plenty for adults to enjoy too, including live music six nights a week. An indoor bar featuring more than a hundred bottled beers. And then the Texas bar outside with more than 50 local brews on tap. We're gonna start with the Carbach, and this is a Kolsch style. And Carbach, that's nice, that's very light all served at a massive bar made from a pecan tree that once shaded this property. I feel like you can feel the energy from that tree. That tree, you know, was probably here at least 50, 100 years. It was, wow. a, it it was, was a big a, tree. It was a big tree. Lisa says supporting local brewers is a priority and creating a sense of community is a commitment. That's a big passion of mine is supporting local local, you know, the local beer, the local food, the local artists. It's, it's well, all about that. Look at what you're doing for the community here. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, thank you. Food here fuels both body and soul. We have the naked. It's naked. You know, I mean, that's the greatest thing in life. He's talking about the Naked Burger, a low-carb classic. With grass-fed beef served on a mountain of organic field greens, grilled spinach and mushrooms, all topped with a spicy poblano sauce. Then there's the most popular plate in the place. The fish tacos, the famous fish tacos. Lisa's famous yes. fish tacos. <laughs> <laughs> to be more accurate. I did, I named it after myself. Yeah. <laughs> they start with two fresh, never frozen, plump tilapia fillets, seasoned and grilled to perfection. A squeeze of fresh lime, then they're nestled inside organic, non-GMO blue corn tortillas. These yummy tacos are topped with house-made cilantro coleslaw and spicy poblano sauce. The tacos come with an organic baby spinach salad with mushrooms and homemade honey mustard dressing. It's love on the tacos. And that's the Lisa special. I love it. I love spicy. And I love poblanos. That's awesome. Good. Happy birthday! So come celebrate that community feel at the Cove, where there's always healthy and delicious to cheer about. Time for my wine find, some perfect wines to celebrate the season. And up first, the ultimate party wine. This one really is a lot of fun. This is the Stella Rosa Red Reserve. When you smell this wine, when you open the bottle, raspberries literally leap right up at you. This is a fun wine. This is a fruit forward wine. It is slightly sweet. So if you love sweeter wines, this is for you. It's also good with chocolate. This is definitely a crowd pleaser at just under $14 a bottle. Stella Rosa Red Reserve. 
Okay, my Chardonnay fans, I wouldn't leave you out. I know there's lots of you out there. This is the Martin Ray Chardonnay. It comes from the Russian River Valley. The wine has flavors of golden apples, nectarines, and pears. It does spend a little time in oak, which adds a nice roundness to the wine. You'll taste just a bit of vanilla on the finish. Chard fans, you're going to like this one. It's less than $15 a bottle. Okay, big red fans, I'm gonna step you up a notch. I fell in love with this wine. This one is Hoops Vineyard Cabernet. This is a serious wine. It is perfect for a special holiday meal or a special holiday gift. With the Hoops Oakville Cab, think big luscious fruit flavors like cassis, blackberries, and cherries. You'll also get some spices and even hints of leather. This is a lovely wine with layers of flavor that will keep you interested till the very last sip. It pairs beautifully with roasted meats, pork loins, steaks too. The Hoops Oakville Cabernet is just under $50, a beautiful holiday wine. And as always, I found all my wines at HEB. When we come back, details on how you could win a relaxing weekend at the Houstonian. How about a weekend away, complete with spa treatments? Here's how you could win. Head to Good Taste TV right now and sign up for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian, complete with spa treatments for you and a guest at the beautiful award-winning Trellis Spa. Let's get social, guys. Like us on Facebook at Good Taste with Tangie or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tangie Patton. And don't forget, if you missed any of today's show, you can always get it online at goodtaste.tv. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, cheers to good taste.